This is class four, and it's the beginning of the second half of the overall course on power searching with Google. This is where we start to learn some truly remarkable things. Up to this point, we've learned basic functions, basic operators, and so on. Now I want to start to amaze you with what we can do. So let's start talking about how do we find out information that we really have no idea how to do. Let's first start with search by image. Search by image is a very basic idea. We already know about image search, where you can type in a few terms, and then Google will find images that match or have those terms in the description or nearby text. Now, we're going to reverse it a little bit. We're going to take an image, say, like this lobster here, and say, can we use this image to search for that image on the internet? No words involved. Let me show you how this works. So here we are regular home page of Google. I'm going to first switch to image search by clicking on the image button on the upper right. And now we're in image search. Notice here that we've got the camera icon here. And what I can do is take a picture, say this lobster picture that's on my desktop, and drag it over and drop the image here. And what it does is it uploads the file to Google. Google then looks at it and says, are there any other images on the internet kind of like this? Lo and behold, there are. A couple of things to notice here. First, in the search box at the top is the best description of that image that Google could come up with. In this case, we know that this image of the lobster is derived from or part of this book, Description de l'Egypte. Okay? Now, this turns out to be a book that was published after the Napoleonic expeditions at the end of the 18th century. So this book was published in 1809. And so by taking this I image of the lobster, we can search all the internet, in this case, including those old texts, and find where it came from. You can see here's the Wikipedia entry on it. There's a description of the book over here on the right. We have found it. And if you open up that book, you'll see, in fact, that lobster picture is in there very nicely, along with lots of other original work from describing Egypt at that time. So one thing I want to point out here, if you just drag the image into Google like this, notice that it's not doing a search. If you just drop it in here, it will actually just show the image. That's not the same as doing an image search. What you have to do first is go to Images Search by clicking on the Images button. And then you can draw the dra drag the object there, and you'll do the search at that point. So be careful about that. So now we figured out what this image is just by doing a simple drag and drop operation. The other thing that search by image allows you to do is to find out, well, where images come from. So in the previous example, we looked for that image and found it was in a book. But how about this one? This is a beautiful place somewhere in the world. But where? So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to drag and drop that beautiful image into Google Image Search and try to figure out where it is. So you'll quickly discover that the answer is it's in the Red Rock Canyon National Conservation Area, which is, as you can read on here, just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, it's not obvious because this is not your typical Las Vegas picture. But by using search by image, we can discover, again, the best description of it and links to other information about that region. So you get the idea. Search by image is really powerful because not only can we find where things come from in texts, or where things are from in the world. But we can also, as in the case with this thing, try to figure out what it is. So what is this? So this is something I found. And what I did is I took a picture of it on a white background. Why would I do that? Because I know that search by image allows me to search for pictures of things. And this is an unusual thing. But I'm betting that there's probably a picture on the internet of this thing in a catalog somewhere, because somebody probably wants to buy it. So what is this thing? So I took a picture of it on a white background, trying to emulate or copy, to the best of my ability, what I think it would look like in a catalog. So let's go ahead and try it. So now I'm going to drag this thing over here into the image search box and discover that it is, in fact, well, there's a lot of catalogs here. But if you look in here, training foam. If you click through there, you'll discover 
that's a kind of wrench, but in particular, it's the kind of wrench that's used to open the pails of foam-making material that firefighters use to spray foam all over the place. I discovered that by doing this simple, taking a photograph of something, knowing that it would probably match an item in a catalog somewhere, and then is able to dig into that catalog and learn exactly what it's all about. So now at this point, you're ready to go to the activity. Go ahead and try this because search by image is truly impressive and you'll be amazed at the kinds of things you can discover with it.